Hey, this is Jay with Sacred Gaming bringing you my most OP Hunter class build here. I'm rocking the Gunslinger. As you can see, Oversoul Edict, Patience and Time, unupgraded. Yeah, you don't want that upgraded stuff. Patience and Time, though, I'm going to change out the Hezen Vengeance for the corrective measure. And then I've got the Kepri Sting because, you know, that is the best exotic to use with the Gunslinger. All right, so as you can tell, obviously, I'm trolling you guys. Uh, don't be using this class setup. I actually just logged on to my son's account, hit the actual match to start, and then I'm like, oh, I better check out what his build was. So I tried to change as much as possible before I could get into here. But uh, as you can see, this is not the most OP build. Don't try it in Trials or Iron Banner or anything like that. In fact, if you guys have a great build for a Hunter class, let me know that. Because as you guys know, not too long ago, I actually created a Hunter and I'm trying to get more used to it in PvP. I'm pretty familiar with the Warlock and everything, but the Hunter is kind of new to me. So if you have a suggested Hunter build, please let me know. And yeah, please don't leave me any messages. This is a troll video, just trying to be funny about that. But hey, don't really want to talk about the build or anything. Instead, I want to talk to you guys about why do you believe what you believe. All right, so here lately, there have been a bunch of things happening we've got bruce jenner and the whole transgendered thing we've got the supreme court and gay marriage we've got the confederate flag and you name it, it seems oh check out that oversoul edict action right there i actually like the oversoul edict surprisingly but uh, yeah it was a big fail right there but you know there are a lot of things going on right now in the news and you might be wondering sometimes, you know, what should I believe about these things? For instance, the Confederate flag. You know, that's one of the things that when I first heard about it, I didn't really know what I believed about it. And so I want to kind of walk you through my thought process as I try and figure out what I believe about different things. Now, before I get into that, let me just be straightforward and tell you that this is going to be coming from a Christian perspective. And I tell you what, I wish they had grenade indicators that would show up in Destiny like they do in Call of Duty because I died so many times to grenades that I don't even realize that they're there. But uh, back to what I was saying, you know, this is coming from a Christian perspective. If you're not a Christian, I think you're going to be able to pull some things out of here. Or maybe you'll get a better understanding on why some Christians believe what they do if you're confused by Christians, you know, this might help you out. And if you are Christians, you know, there's a lot of issues that I believe aren't black and white. For instance, tattoos. You know, I take an unorthodox view on tattoos. Um, you might be looking at an issue like capital pun punishment. Should I believe in the death penalty as a Christian? So this is going to be a tool that I think helps you figure out what you believe and why you believe it. So I use something called the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Some people call it the Outler quadrilateral, but basically it talks about scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. Those are kind of four sides to the quadrilateral and they form a base, a good foundation to figure out what you believe. Now, um, first and foremost is scripture. These are not equal things. These are not all equal parts. We don't look at all four things equally. For a Christian, scripture is the primary thing that we look at and we look at first. And it's very important though, as we're looking at scripture, that we actually understand and interpret scripture correctly. For instance, I believe that a lot of people misinterpret scripture when it comes to tattoos and what they'll quote and everything like that. I believe that you have to look at the context that these things were written in and what was going on and everything like that. So it's first and foremost very important to figure out the right thing and take scripture in the right context but ultimately for Christian that's gonna form what we believe or that should form what we believe regardless of the other three now if it's ever confusing and everything like that then we actually start looking at can look to tradition reason and experience so when scripture isn't exactly clear then we go back and look to well what's the church tradition be now this is not always infallible there are some things that the church has believed that have been off so, you know, we have to temper that with what scripture really says and what our reason and experience says. But we can actually learn a lot of things from what the church believes. There is some value in what the church believes or has believed and everything like that. So that's another side tradition. The third side is reason. And this is where we get into things like science or human rationality or logic. You know, what's the logical conclusion of this? This is where we get into things like debate. Debate is actually a good thing. Well, it actually used to be a good thing. Today, we've kind of twisted debate and really um, done some bad things 
with it. A lot of times when you debate people, it really just becomes about name calling and everything like that. But it used to be, when I was growing up, it used to be like you had conservatives and liberals and we would go together and we would debate and we would talk things over. And at the end of the day, we would respect the other person's point of view. Today though, that's gone. We don't respect the other person's point of view. In fact, we believe what we believe. And if you don't share our belief, then you're the devil or you're the scum of the earth or you hate people or stuff like that. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that. I mean, look at the gay marriage debate. If you don't agree on the gay marriage debate, um, you're just evil or you're just a, a hater and there is no common ground. You know, we can't figure out why we believe or why the other person believes what they believe. And unfortunately, we lose something from that. But that's reason. And then the final side is experience. And this is where, you know, what we've lived and what we've seen from life comes into play. Now, it's very interesting because sometimes the Bible will pull something out there with scripture and it will say something like, hey, you should forgive your enemies. And we, when we look at it from things like reason, it's like that doesn't make any sense. You know, why should I forgive somebody that's treating me badly and something like that but then we go ahead and do it and our experience teaches us that what the Bible says is actually true it is better to forgive and and do that than actually go for vengeance and everything like that so all of these things kind of play together and really build on each other or most of the times they build on each other there's sometimes that they don't agree and that's why I said in the very beginning though Scripture has to be the go-to one and the most important one. That is the authority. That is the number one. For instance, if church tradition doesn't agree with tradition, then tradition wins. That's why the Bible tells us, hey, we need to evaluate what our pastors are saying and what people are saying. We don't just accept what people are saying because they're a pastor. We need to be evaluating it with the Word of God. And it's the same thing with reason and with experience. You know, Scripture has to be the first one. But I hope this helps you out. You know, unfortunately, we live in a day and age where we're moving away from these things, where we, we're moving away from reason, we're moving away from experience, tradition, and scripture, and we're really just going with how we feel about something. And unfortunately, there are a lot of Christians that are choosing how they feel about something over scripture. And that's something that we just really cannot do. We have to go to scripture, understand it correctly. And that has to be more important than how we feel. That has to be something that we trust more than that and live our life by more than just how we feel. But hopefully this helps you out. I wanted to do this video too because it's going to set up some future videos where I talk about topics. But uh, like I said, hopefully you like this. If you do, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and share it. But guys, as always, take care and God bless. Thank you.